Mahabharata is the largest epic in the history of mankind as it runs to over 100,000 verses. The name originates from Bharat, India, the land of King Bharata, the son of King Dushyanta and Shakuntala. Mahabharata is one of the two great epics of Hindu dharma, the other being the Ramayana. The Mahabharata is respected as the fifth Veda. It describes events that took place in ancient India around 5000 BC. An important event in the Mahabharata is the appearance of Lord Krishna, the eighth incarnation of Lord Vishnu. Sri Krishna's divine revelation to Arjuna, the universally popular Bhagavad Gita, occurs in the Mahabharata in the dramatic setting of a war about to begin. Mahabharata mainly tells the story of the Pandavas and the Kauravas. The Pandavas are the five sons of King Pandu and their cousins, the Kauravas, who are hundreds in number, are the sons of King Dhritarashtra. In the Mahabharata, love, hate, loyalty, arrogance, fierceness, wisdom, thirst for knowledge, willpower, cunning, self-control, weakness, and many other human qualities are shown coming into play beautifully. As the saying goes, there is nothing that is not in the Mahabharata and whatever is elsewhere can be found in the Mahabharata. The great epic is akin to a long journey with many side roads and detours. Long ago, the kingdom of Hastinapur was ruled by a mighty king called Shantanu. He was an efficient ruler. One day, when he was traveling in the countryside, he met a beautiful girl. The girl was busy collecting flowers from a tree beside the stream. The moment he met her, he was carried away by her divine beauty. Young lady, may I know who you are? The girl was surprised to see the king. My lord, what do you want to know about me? You look different and I am greatly attracted to you. The girl smiled and was busy with her work again. Young lady, I am the king of Hastinapur. If you are willing, I can take you with me as my queen. The girl was astonished, but she didn't speak anything. Are you not interested in me? The girl looked at Shantanu. Great King, I am Ganga, the holy river. I am ready to marry you if you make me a promise. What is it? You should never question me about the reason for my actions. Alright. The king happily married Ganga and made her his queen. Ganga gave birth to seven kids, but immediately after delivery, all the kids were let in the river. King Shantanu became deeply depressed because of the actions of Ganga, but he refrained from questioning her. Then the eighth kid was born, and Shantanu could not control himself any longer. Ganga, stop it. I cannot stand this any longer. Why? Oh, why do you have to be so hard-hearted as to kill each of our children? Dear, you have not kept up your promise. But let me tell you the truth. The kids who were born are celestial gods. Due to curses, 
all of them were born as human beings. But to reduce their punishment, I threw them in water to bring an end to their curse, so that they reach their heavenly abode faster. But since you have broken your promise, I can no longer stay with you. Let our eighth kid stay with you. Ganga, don't leave me. Please don't go away. Ganga gave the eight kid to King Shantanu and left him forever. Shantanu was in deep sorrow, unable to bear the separation of his wife. He named his son as Devarata. He was trained well in martial arts and governance. He was an exceptionally skilled administrator and an undefeatable warrior. But he remained an obedient son to his father. One day, King Shantanu went for a hunt in the forest. At that moment, he was attracted by a heavenly fragrance. What a heavenly fragrance! Lovely! Where is it coming from? He went in search of the fragrance and came across a stunning beauty. What a marvelous beauty! The girl saw Shantanu and bowed her head down. Beautiful maiden, who are you? My lord, I am Satyavati, the daughter of a fisherman of this village. You are truly beautiful. I am the king of Hastinapur and I would like to marry you. Uh, please ask my father. Shantanu was lost in the charm of the girl and he met her father. Great king, we belong to the fisherman community of this kingdom. I am greatly honored to give my daughter in marriage to your highness. Shantanu smiled. But your highness, you should not mistake me if I ask you something. Shantanu looked puzzled. If my daughter marries you, her sons cannot become the king as your elder son is already there. So my daughter will not get the status of queen. Shantanu was stunned by the words of the wily fisherman. He returned to his kingdom crestfallen. On the one hand, he could not forget the beautiful Satyavati. On the other were the harsh words of the fisherman. Torn between his attraction for Satyavati and his love for his son, he felt sick. A few days later, Devarata observed the changes in his father. Father, what happened to you? Why are you so sad and dejected? Devarata, I will be all right. Don't worry. It's just mild fever. But Devarata did not believe his father's words. He found the reason of his sickness through the charioteer and met the fisherman chief. Welcome, welcome, the great prince of great empire. I knew everything that has happened. Tell me what you want. My father's well-being is more important for me than anything else. My lord, why do you speak such big words? We are here to do your bidding. No need for more words. You are scared that I will become the king. I will give you a promise that I will not become the king. Is that fine for you? I believe in you, my lord. But what can I do? If your kids ask for the throne, they will have the right, won't they? Devarata was stunned by the fisherman's ambition for his daughter's children. But as his father's happiness was of foremost importance to him, he was prepared to grant his demands. All right, listen. 
I swear on the earth, sun, moon, stars and the entire universe that I will not marry in my lifetime and there is no question of me having a wife or kids. My father's happiness is all that I seek. Come on, send your daughter with us. The fisherman was immensely happy. Even as Devarata uttered his vow, there was thunder and lightning in the skies. A divine voice was heard from the skies. Long live Bhishma! Long live Bhishma! Bhishma means the terrible. Indeed, Devavrata's vow of not marrying or having kids was a terrible decision, impossible for the feeble-hearted. The gods appeared on the skies. Devavrata, we are amazed by your love for your father. You will be called as Bhishma from today. You will have a long prosperous life and, and you, you can, can die only if you wish. The gods showered flowers on him. Bhishma bowed to the gods and took Satyavati to the palace. His father was upset to hear his son's vow. Devaratha, why have you done like this? I am ashamed to stand before you. Father, I love you. You are more important for me. Shantanu hugged Bhishma. He then married Satyavati. Years passed and Satyavati gave birth to two sons. Shantanu passed away after a few years and Satyavati gave the entire responsibility of ruling the kingdom to Bhishma. Of the two princes, Chitrangada, who succeeded Shantanu, was killed in a battle. Only Vichitravirya was alive to rule the kingdom. Bhishma, I consider you as my eldest son. You have to take care of my son and also the kingdom. I wish you get married and settle down. Seeing you like this pains me greatly. If you bear all our responsibilities but forsake your own welfare, it will not prove good for our family. Mother, I can take care of everything but I will not marry and I don't want to. I will get a beautiful princess for my brother. Don't worry. Bhishma decided to give three beautiful princesses, Amba, Ambika and Ambalika for his brother. They were the princess of Kashi. He fought with the other kings and brought the princess home. On the way, Amba pleaded to Bhishma to spare her. Dear King, I have decided to marry a prince of my choice and even he wanted to marry me. But you have defeated him and brought me here. I request you to leave me. Get married to the person whom you want. You may go now. Bhishma took the other two girls as brides for his brother. When he reached Hastinapur, Amba came back to him. My lord, the prince who was supposed to marry me abandoned me since he was defeated by you. Please help me out in this. I don't know what to do. Amba, I am helpless. It was your decision to go back. My lord, it was you who defeated the other princes and brought me in the first place. Cannot you marry me and take me with you? Bhishma was surprised as he did not expect this turn of events. Young lady, I have already vowed that I will never marry in my lifetime. I cannot break the vow. I am sorry that I am not able to help you. Amba was deeply disappointed. You have wrecked my life. Where will I go now? 
who will marry me i take this vow that one day i will cause you a death saying this amba moved away from the palace bhishma was annoyed by amba's words but his hands were tied as far as she was concerned the two princesses were married to his brother two sons were born one was dhritarashtra and the other pandu dhritarashtra was born blind and was not in a position to rule the kingdom pandu and dhritarashtra grew up under the guidance of bhishma bhishma decided to make pandu the king of hastinapur pandu it's time for you to take the reins of the kingdom uncle but dhritarashtra is my elder brother but he will not be able to rule the kingdom as he is blind it's your duty to make our dynasty flourish Bhishma arranged for the marriage of Pandu and Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra's wife was Gandhari. She was an ardent lover of her husband. As her husband was blind, she decided not to see the world and blindfolded herself. There was another king by name Kunti Bhoja. He was a friend of Bhishma. He had a daughter by name Kunti. Kunti was smart. and beautiful For some time Kunti was rendering her services to sage Durvasa in his ashram One day Great Guru shall I get some water for you to drink Kunti I have been observing you for the past 6 months Though you are a king's daughter and used to a lot of comforts You have been able to do all the work in this ashram. You are so sincere and humble that everybody likes you. Great Guru, I should be blessed to serve you. Kunti, in appreciation of your services, I would like to grant you a boon. Ask me what you want. A boon? Kunti, I will grant you a boon which none can get. I will teach you a mantra. If you call upon a god and tell this mantra, the god whom you have called will give you a child the very next moment. Guru, uh, you mean a child from gods? Kunti, you do not understand the real meaning of this boon now. It will be greatly useful for you in your life. Kunti was very anxious. but at the same time immensely scared to utter the mantra thank you great guru kunti came to the river bed and was constantly thinking about the guru's boon is it possible calling the gods and getting a kid from them how's that shall i tell the mantra now no no If any god comes what will i do how will it work all right come what me let me try the mantra and see what happens whom will i call now she opened her eyes and saw the powerful sun she decided to call on the sun god she closed her eyes and spelled the mantra She waited. Ha, huh? nothing happened. A few minutes later, clouds gathered in the sky and became reddish in color. The wind was powerful, but Kunti was not able to withstand the sudden changes in the atmosphere. Just then, with a thousand blazing rays, the sun god appeared before her. Dear lady, I have come here to give you a kid. As per the boon received by you, Kunti trembled with fear. My lord, I am an unmarried girl. I take back the mantra. Please forgive me. Kunti, I am bound by the power of mantra. I cannot go back without giving the kid. Kunti, 
वो स्पेल बाउंड द नेक्स्ट मोमेंट ए लवली किड वॉज इन देंड्स ऑफ कुंती एंड द सन गॉड डिस कुंती वॉज स्टंट टू सी द ग्लोइंग किड हु वॉज बोर्न विद एन आमर इन द चेस्ट एंड टू लवली इयर रिंग्स द चाइल्ड लुक्ड डिफाइन Kunti was not able to take her eyes off the child. Being an unmarried girl, how can I take this child with me? Will anyone believe me if I tell that what happened? Kunti immediately took a box, placed the kid, and sent it down the river. None knew about this, and Kunti came back to the ashram. A few days later she went back to her kingdom. Bhishma approached his friend Kunti Boja to marry Kunti to Pandu. Kunti Boja gladly accepted the proposal. Pandu got married to Kunti and Madri, the two princesses, and became the king of Hastinapur. One day when Pandu went hunting in the forest He saw a male and a female deer. The moment he saw them, he killed the male deer. You heartless king, you have killed my husband. I curse you that you will also die without enjoying the pleasures of life. You will not have any issues. Cursing thus, the female deer also passed away. Pandu was terribly disturbed and informed the matter to his wife. Please do not worry about it. God will show us a way. If we don't have kids, our generation will come to an end. What will I do now? My lord, I have to tell you about a boon which I have received from Sage Durvasa. A boon. Kunti told Pandu about the boon she had received from Sage Durvasa, but did not tell him anything about the sun god and the child. He also told me that this boon will be useful for me in the future. Perhaps he knew all that is happening to us. That's good, Kunti. If we don't have issues, our dynasty will end with us. Tell the mantra. right away Kunti chanted the mantra She prayed to Lord Yama and got a son They named him Yudhishthira The second time Kunti called upon Lord Vayu the wind god The kid was named Bhima The third time Kunti called upon Lord Indra the son whom she got was named as Arjuna Pandu was pleased with all the kids Kunti why did you stop let us have more kids No my lord I don't want to use this mantra too many times Why Madri is also like me let her make use of this mantra and have two more kids Madri was highly pleased with the kindness of Kunti. Kunti taught the mantra to Madri. Madri recited the mantra and called upon the Ashwins. She had two sons, Nakula and Sahadeva. Madri, look how handsome they are. Madri hugs Kunti. The first son Yudhishthira stood for righteousness and truth as he was the son of Yama the god of death and justice The second son Bhima stood for strength and power as he was the son of Vayu the wind god The third son Arjuna stood for heroism competency and courage as he was the son of Lord Indra The fourth and fifth sons were Nakula and Sahadeva They stood for wisdom and endurance as they were the sons of the Ashwins. The kids grew up as royal princes. 
the palace of Dhritarashtra. My lord, did you hear about the five sons of Pandu? Yes, I heard. I too need a kid. I want my son should rule this kingdom. Don't worry. We will get a son to rule our empire. A few days passed and Gandhari delivered. But to everyone's surprise, it was not a baby. It was a ball of flesh. Gandhari was in tears. Just then, Sage Vyasa came to meet Dhritarashtra. Sage Vyasa, please help us. Gandhari is not able to bear this. As it is, we were unhappy that we did not have children. And now this, please bless me that my son should rule Hastinapur. Dhritarashtra, this is a curse. Cut the ball of flesh into hundred pieces and put them in jars of ghee. What will happen? Do as I say and wait till tomorrow. Dhritarashtra acted according to the instructions of sage Vyasa. The next morning, somehow the sun did not rise with its usual charm. The skies were dark, the wolves howled and the owls screamed. An ominous silence surrounded the palace of Hastinapur. The guards came running to Dhritarashtra. My lord, a great news. There are kids in all the hundred jars. It's really exciting to see the kids. They are crying for food. We don't know how to take care of them. The guards are all agog excited. Gandhari too was extremely happy. Gandhari, are you happy now? Not one son. We have hundred sons to rule our kingdom. Just then, Sage Vyasa entered the palace. My lord, the sage has come to meet you. Great sage, I can never forget you. You are like a god to this kingdom. If you had not been here, the entire Kuru dynasty would have been doomed. Dhridharashtra. I have something to tell you. Dhritarashtra looked confused. Tell me, great sage. Of all the kids, the kid in the first jar is your first son. I have decided to name him Duryodhana. Your first son will not bring good to this kingdom. We might even destroy your dynasty. Oh God! What are you talking? Great Sage, what is this that you are saying at this auspicious moment? It is better that you send him away after a few years to a distant place. No, no, not at all. I cannot spare my son. Sage, will you stop all this? He is my son and my eldest son. He will rule this kingdom and will teach a lesson to all the people who oppose him. He will be the most powerful ruler of all times. Alright, let me take leave now. Thanks for your concern. The sage left with a heavy heart. The palace of Hastinapur. The Pandavas and Gauravas grew together. In the meantime, King Pandu died and his wife Madri died in the pyre along with him. Kunti was left alone with her five sons. Bhishma Pitamaha, my sons do not have a father. I leave them to you. 
you are their father, mother, teacher and God. Kunti, I will train them well and see that they make our dynasty flourish. Thank you, Father. Bhishma meets Dhritarashtra. Great Father, welcome. I was eagerly expecting your arrival. My ill fate does not permit me to go anywhere. Dhridharashtra, don't worry about your physical problem. You have hundred sons, which means you have two hundred highs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are right. Pitamaha, we both cannot see the outside world. We leave our kids to you. You are everything to them. Gandhari, your sons are your strength. I will train them well. Bhishma was put up with the great responsibility of taking care of the Pandavas and the Kauravas. The princes developed hatred towards each other right from day one. The eldest son of the Kauravas was Duryodhana. He was the most cunning of all. He hated Arjuna to the core as he was the most capable and intelligent. One day, Bhishma was in a deep discussion with his ministers. Pitamaha, you look so confused. The biggest responsibility lies on us now. Yes, the greatest responsibility of bringing up the princes and entrusting the great dynasty to them. But we should find a good teacher to train these princes. Pitamaha, we heard about Dronacharya, a highly intelligent and skilled teacher. He is a disciple of the great Parashurama. There is none to match him now. If he is willing to train the princess, our problem will be solved. I have also heard about him, but where to find him? We will send our men to find out his whereabouts. But I heard that he has left his native village along with his family and has gone elsewhere. So that's the problem. Alright, let's see. Bhishma left with a troubled mind. The next day, when the princess were playing in the ground, The ball fell into the well. Oh no! How will we get the ball out? It's you who have put the ball inside. Get inside the well and bring it. Just then, they saw a dark looking Brahmin standing near the ground. There is a Brahmin standing nearby. Can we ask him to help us? Let's ask him. Come. The princess approached the Brahmin. The Brahmin was none other than the famous Dronacharya, the disciple of Parasurama. He had come to Hastinapur in search of livelihood. He saw the princess struggling for the ball. Sir, can you please help us to get the ball out of the well? Drona smiled at Arjuna. What will you give me if I get the ball for you, little master? Hmm, hmm. I will.
will give whatever you ask for. Ha! Smart boy. I don't want anything, dear. I will get the ball for you. Drona used the blades of dried glass like arrows and one blade stuck to the other and in this manner he brought the ball from inside the well. Hooray! The ball is out! Great master! Thank you, sir. The boys took the ball and ran to the ground to play. Drona was silently watching the kids. Then Arjuna, Duryodhana and Bhima came to Drona. Sir, may I know who you are? Master, why don't you come with us to the palace? Sir, where do you come from? Dear kids, please go and tell whatever has happened here to your grandfather Bhishma. He will know who I am. The princess ran to Bhishma to inform him about the matter. Pitama, we saw an excellent archer today. Pitama, when our ball fell inside the well, he brought it up using dried blades of grass. The ball automatically came up. It was amazing! Pitama, we have never seen an archer like him before. Bhishma was surprised. Interesting, but did you inquire about him? Pitama, he told us to inform this matter to you and said that you would know his identity. Yeah, I got him. He is Dronacharya. Where is he now? He was in the ground. Guards, go and bring Dronacharya immediately here. Drona was brought by the guards to Bhishma. Great teacher, I welcome you to our kingdom. Pitamaha, I am delighted to meet you. I have heard a lot about you and came to Hastinapur to meet you. In fact, even I was in search of you. People told us that you have left your place along with your family. What's the problem? Pitamaha, do you know about King Drupada? Yes, I do. We both were classmates and thick friends from our young age. When we completed our schooling, he asked me to meet him in case of any help. Interesting. When I completed my training under Guru Parashurama, my father got me married and I had a son. But I didn't have enough money to take care of my family. My wife insisted that I should meet Drupada and seek his help. Then, when I met Drupada, I faced the worst insult in my life. He treated me like a stranger, forgetting our past friendship. He told me that there can be friendship between persons of equal status. I understood that I had no status as I was poor. But he ill-treated me in front of everyone. The people in the assembly laughed at me when I tried to remind Drupada about our past friendship. I am very sad to hear this. I heard that you were looking for a good trainer to train the princess. Guru Dronacharya, if you could take up the responsibility of training the princess and becoming their guru, I will feel greatly relieved. This is the biggest worry for me. Pitamaha, I am greatly honored. I take up this great responsibility. Thank you. Drona was moved by the kindness of Bhishma. Drona became the guru for the Pandavas and the Kauravas. The princess liked their guru. He trained them well in various forms of martial arts. Of all the princes, Arjuna was very smart. Drona 
liked him very much. Years passed. One day, when he was training the princes, he wanted to test them. Dear students, I have taught you all the nuances of archery well. I hope you don't have any doubts. Guru, you give me any target, I will strike it straight. Not you. Even I can do that. Mind it. All right. In this skill, concentration is very important. I want to test your concentration. Are you ready? Guru, tell us what to do. Look at the bird on top of the tree. Now, I want you to strike the bird. Yes, Guru. That's simple, huh? I will do it, Guru. Okay, Bhima, come here. Bhima, what do you see now? Guru, I see the bird, the tree trunk and leaves. Shh! All right, you move aside. Now, Duryodhana, come here. Duryodhana, tell me what you see now. The bird, its feathers, the trees, clouds, flowers. Oh, Arjuna, come here. Tell me what do you see, Guru? I see the eye of the bird. What else do you see, Guru? I am able to see only the eye of the bird and nothing else. Excellent. Now shoot the bird. Good shot. This is what I expected. When you concentrate on something, nothing else should be visible to you, even if it is before your eyes. The princess got trained well in all the arts. They completed their education, but the hatred between the Pandavas and the Kauravas grew day by day. Duryodhana hated Bhima to the core and he was jealous of Arjuna. Yudhishthira hated Duryodhana's crooked ways. It was difficult for Drona to manage the princess. The young princess grew up to be handsome and youthful princess. Bhima was huge as he used to eat a lot. Arjuna was smart and Yudhishthira was soft-spoken and kind. Duryodhana was well-built and tall, but his anger and jealousy made him appear arrogant. One day, Drona arranged for a function, inviting the people of the city to exhibit the skill sets of Arjuna as he was his favorite student. The Kauravas were seated on one side and the Pandavas were seated on the other. Bhishma, Kunti and the other elders were also present. Arjuna came to the days. Victory to Arjun! Victory to Arjun! The crowd was thrilled to see the handsome Arjuna. Arjuna displayed his great skills in archery. He shot an arrow into the clouds and there was a shower of flowers on the crowd. He produced thunder and lightning in the crowds. The crowds cheered him and Arjuna was the hero of the day. Bhishma was happy to see great proficiency of Arjuna. Dushrasana, who was the brother of Duryodhana, was not able to tolerate this. Dushrasana, look, our guru has planned this event to put us to shame. In fact, he need not have invited us. He could sit admiring Arjuna for the rest of the day. Come, let's leave. Just then, they heard a voice in the crowd. A handsome young man emerged from the crowd. His tall stature, broad shoulders and fierce looks made everyone doubt whether he too hailed from the royal family. Look how smart he looks. Arjuna, I am Karna, 
I can do everything that you have done and even more. The crowd was spellbound. And even Drona marveled at the young man's confidence. Karna took his bow and arrow and did whatever Arjuna had done. The crowd cheered Karna and encouraged the tough competition. Marvelous! Who is this newcomer? He appears to be a prince. Arjuna was angry because of the unforeseen development. But Duryodhana was tremendously happy. Dusasan, look, a tough man has come to teach a lesson to Arjuna. Who could this be? He has taught a lesson not only to Arjuna, but also to our master. You are right. Let's see what happens. Arjuna, I have proved that I too can do whatever you can do. So what? We don't encourage anyone who comes here and that too uninvited. This is an open competition and not only for you, but I am ready to challenge you. Can you face me? Who are you? How dare you come here and argue with me? Karna kept quiet. Are you a king? Do you have a kingdom? Karna remained silent. Speak up. Who are you? I am the son of Adiratha. Adiratha? I have never heard a king's name like that. He is a charioteer. Ha! Ho, 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 ho. A charioteer's son. Wonderful. Karna bowed his head down. Poor man. Look how he is getting insulted. He is very talented. We don't encourage serpents to participate with us. Who do you think we are? How dare you call me for a challenge? Arjuna, how can a charioteer's son know about manners? We are princes and will accept challenges only from our equals. Bhishma was not happy to see Karna insulted, but he was not able to tell anything in front of the crowd. Karna bowed his head down. Just then, Duryodhana got up from his seat. Arjuna, Karna is my brother from today. I give a part of my kingdom to him. He is a king and is equal to you now. Face him if you have the guts. The crowd was stunned at Duryodhana's action. He is highly generous. Karna is extremely talented. That's why Duryodhana gives him a kingdom. Bhishma was taken aback by the turn of events. Arjuna, Karna is also a king now. He is equal to you. Be ready to face him. Duryodhana, what do you think of me? Just because he has got a kingdom doesn't mean that he has become equal to me. He is a person who has no status by birth. Yes, he is a charioteer's son. He doesn't have the right to step on the dais. We are not ready to speak with anyone. Let's move. The brothers got up. Karna can never stand in front of me and fight. Status has to come from birth. Don't you know that Duryodhana? The Pandavas walked out. Duryodhana's eyes turned red with anger. He felt that a golden opportunity to insult Arjuna had been lost. He knew that Karna would be a great challenge to Arjuna. Listen all, whether Yudhishthir and his men agree or not, I'm least bothered about you. Karna is my brother. I'm giving a part of my kingdom to him and making him the king. By all means, he is equal to me and the other princes of Hastinapur. Karna was experiencing different emotions. On one hand, he was downcast at being identified 
as just a charioteer's son. On the other, he was happy at the status and prestige conferred on him by Karna. Suddenly, Adirata, the charioteer from Duryodhana's kingdom, came up to him and fell at the feet of Duryodhana. Get up! Your Majesty, Karna is my son and I will be ever grateful to you for your kindness. It's my pleasure. He's extremely talented and he will teach a lesson to the Pandavas. Karna's eyes filled with tears. Words failed him. Karna, you are a king now. Thank you very much, great king. I will never forget your help till my end. I will live for you and die for you. Duryodhana embraced Karna. The first part of Mahabharata tells us about the evolution of the Kuru dynasty and the princes of the dynasty. This part of the Mahabharata explains clearly that if we do good, we will get good things in life. Though the fisherman was cunning and greedy for his daughter Satyavati and her progeny, no good came out of his selfishness. Satyavati did not have a peaceful life. His grandson died and his great-grandsons Pandu and Dhritarashtra did not have happiness till their end. But the great Bhishma sacrificed everything with true love for his father. He became the greatest person for three generations and was blessed by the gods. The other chapters of Mahabharata reveal greater truths about life and mankind.